What is up everybody, Golden Yogi here, and you are tuning into the channel with the Golden Perspective. Today we are going to take a look at the week on chain, Glassnode Insights, week 32, 2021. Let's get into it. Before we do that, I want to kindly invite you to subscribe down below if you have not already. Thank you to all those who have. While you're down there, please be sure to turn on the post notification so you know when the next video comes up. Don't miss out. And please, down in the description, go follow me on library. More and more censorship is happening on YouTube all the time. It's good that you get to know what library is and just get yourself set up over there. Okay. Also, please leave me a comment, uh, uh, any sort of uh, idea, whatever. My one request um, is that you please be civil in your discourse. It's really easy. Kindness and compassion are absolutely free. And I truly believe that if we use them and we filter our thoughts through them, we can help make this world a better place. All right. Thank you so much for listening to that. And let's get into it. The market rallies higher as indications of a Bitcoin on-chain supply squeeze take shape and Ethereum successfully rolls out EIP-1559. Now, that's the first time I've ever heard Ethereum into one of these that I'm reading. So this is really cool. All right, let's get going. The Bitcoin market has seen another strong week with prices rallying from lows of 37,524 up to a local high of 45,215. The market briefly traded above the 200 day moving average at 45,000 over the weekend before retracing and commencing consolidation. As a well-observed technical indicator for bull bear bias, the market's response to a rejection or breach of the 200-day MA is likely to be a source of attention over the coming weeks. As price action confirms underlying market strength, we assess the on-chain response to the rally, seeking to identify whether Bitcoin holders are taking exit liquidity, accumulating, or hodling on. We will also assess the early stages of Ethereum supply dynamics following the successful release of the EIP-1559 fee burn mechanism. Here we are into this other rally. Like we see that like right where price started, came up, came back to test it. And we went up for some new highs and local highs, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. On-chain spending behavior. We start our analysis with the spent output profit ratio, the SOPR metric, which is a relatively short range indicator presenting a view over the profit and loss realized by coins spent on chain. Here we have used the workbench tool to overlay two versions of SOPR, the ASOPR representing the whole market, but excluding coins younger than one hour, non-economical relay transactions. Okay. The STH, short-term holder SOPR, representing the profit loss of short-term holders. After many months trading below a value of one net realized loss, both SOPR metrics have executed what looks to be a textbook bullish reversal. This is described as follows. A, the SOPR breaks above one. After a sustained period of losses being realized on chain, the signals, uh, this signal profits are realized and the market was able to absorb that supply. B, the SOPR reached a local high. Profitable coins take advantage of market strength and spend and realize profits. This creates a local top via oversupply and price corrections. C, SOPR resets back to 1.0, signaling profitable coins have stopped being spent and conviction returns to the market and the dip is bought. SOPR then trades higher, repeating the rally higher. Most important to watch is whether the SOPR holds above 1.0. Should it continue to trade higher, this reflects a bullish scenario where the market is adequately absorbing profits realized on spent coins. If on the other hand, SOPR falls and trades back to 1.0 on a sustained basis, it would suggest a, a general weakness in the market and potentially a fake out rally. <clears throat> The spent output age bands demonstrate on that on the whole middle age coins that are three months to 12 months and old coins greater than a year remain relatively dormant and are not existing uh, the market since 2018. I think I'm saying they're not exiting the market since. Okay. 
The majority of spending in this cohort are younger and uh, and aged between three the month to six months, representing bull market buyers. These transactors may be exiting or de-risking closer to their cost basis. Overall, this metric remains fairly bullish in that urgent exit selling by old hands does not seem to be occurring. The ASOL is a lifespan metric that, uh, that generally confirms this observation. ASOL reflects the average age of spent outputs on a per transaction basis. No influence from coin volume spent. ASOL traded higher throughout quarter one and quarter two as old coins were distributed, eventually putting, in the, uh, putting the top in around 64K. The bearish shock in May caused this metric to collapse lower, indicating that owners of older UXTOs were largely unwilling to sell at those prices and did not panic sell. ASOL has, re has not returned to the 2020 lows, approximately 20 days, however, appears to be trading sideways again a strong uptrend in asol from here would be bearish as it indicates old coins are sent are spent back into liquid cir circulation conversely asol trading sideways to down as it currently is would suggest can uh, would suggest conviction accumulation and hodling prevails bull 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 bear kind of going sideways so this could be part of more accumulation on a 14-day median basis, average coin dormancy has returned to around 10 days, the same level as the period of accumulation throughout 2019 and 2020. This lifespan metric uh, presents the average lifespan of spent coins on a per BTC spent basis. It provides further evidence that old hands are not taking exit liquidity at this stage. This is likely constructive for prices ahead. Large transactions dominate. If we investigate the dominance of transactions by size, we can see a clear trend in play. The chart below shows dominance by on-chain transaction volume for values exceeding $1 million plus around 23 BTC plus at 43.5K uh, per coin. Uh, since September 2020, the dominance of these large, trans large size transactions has risen from 30% to 70% of the total value transferred. As the market traded down to the lows of 29K in late July, the 1 million to 10 million transaction group spiked markedly and increased, which increased dominance by 20%. This week, the dominance of 10 million plus volume followed through with a spike of 20% dominance supporting the price rally. Given the lifespan analysis above, should suggest older coins have been largely dormant of late this suggests that these are uh these large size transactions are more likely to be accumulators than sellers and is again fairly constructive for price <clears throat> the other side of this equation the chart below demonstrates is a structural decline in small size transaction dominance Transactions of less than $1 million, in $1 million worth in size have declined from 70% down to 30-40% to dominance. These two charts clearly demonstrate a new era of institutional and high net worth capital is flowing through the Bitcoin network since 2020. Supply Squeeze Assessment A popular talking point of late has been the potential for a Bitcoin supply squeeze. Indeed, we have seen an extraordinary recovery of long-term holders, LTH, own coins with total supply held approaching 12.48 million BTC. This is extremely similar to the volume of coins held by long-term holders in October 2020 before the primary bullish impulse started. This, is, this on-chain response is largely indicative of volume of coins that were accumulated in Q1 of 2021 that remain uh, tightly held. It, to paint a quite a bullish picture for aggregate market conviction. Although, although do not, or, or although, excuse me, although do note, increases in a long-term holder supply is a characteristic of bear market accumulation, and bull markets are the result of the squeeze supply forging in bear markets. So as you can see this chart right here, 
we have also shown the circulating and adjusted supply metrics adjusted supply accounts for the coins that are either likely lost or ancient in, and deemed extremely illiquid and unlikely to freely circulate. We have used Workbench to take the ratio between long-term holders and short-term holder held supply and the adjusted supply to see the proportion of the freely circulated coin, circulating coins owned by each cohort. By this metric, long-term holder owned supply has just reached a new all-time high of 82.68%. Note also the persistent uptrend in coins held by these long-term investors over time. Short-term holder owned supply continues to decline, suggesting hodling and coin matur maturation is in play. Major supply squeeze events have historically occurred when the short-term uh, holder supply ratio hits 20%, often holding that level for some time, representing a significant constraint on freely circulating supply. The short-term holder supply ratio is currently at 25%, suggesting that a further maturation of only 5% of adjusted supply would put the market firmly back in historical supply squeeze conditions. To assess how likely the remaining 5% of adjusted supply is to be accumulated and maturing, we can inspect the HODL waves. Relatively young coins aged between one week and three months represent a large portion of the liquid supply. We can see that after the uptrend in Q1, old coin distribution at these age brackets have fallen back to bear market equilibrium level of around 12.5% to 15% of the supply. This downtrend indicates that coin maturation is indeed in play and that many of the 2021 bull market buyers have stuck around to become strong hand hodlers. This is largely confirmed by observing the middle to old coin age bands three month to two year, which show a remarkable increase in supply from 35.7% to 47.5% of the circulating supply, not adjusted supply. Coins aged 3 months to 12 months bull market buyers are leading the charge on hodling behavior, displaying an undeniable trend of coin maturation. <clears throat> wow. Of particular note, the three month to six month ba um, age band, which currently holds 13.5% of the coin supply, and includes the approximate threshold between short-term holders and long-term holders of 155 days, <clears throat> approximately 6.5% of the entire coin supply reached three-month maturity on the 15th of April, and it appears that these coins are still held. While the supply squeeze based on short-term holder supply ratio is not yet at 20%, there are numerous indicators and trends in play that suggest it may hit uh, in mid-September, but that the conditions for supply squeeze are already in play. Weekly feature, the EIP-1559 burn. So that is unique to this week. The Ethereum network has recently rolled out the London upgrade, which includes the new fee stability mechanism EIP-1559. As part of the implementation, de implementation details, it is a, um, is a burn mechanism for the base fee portion of the transaction fee denominated in ETH. Since the launch of the London upgrade, block height 12,000 or 12,965,000 until the time of writing, block height 12,968,848, a total of 43.6 thousand ETH has been issued via peer, uh, proof of work minting, mining, minting, same kind of creating new coins. In the same time, a total of 15,000.25 thousand ETH has been burned, representing a 35% reduction in the total net issuance. Taking a look at the volume of ETH burn per block, we can see that so far fee pressure has pushed the burning mechanism above design, uh, of the design to ETH issuance in a handful of instances creating uh, net deflationary blocks so far, EIP-1559 has a mean burn rate of 0 0.679, sorry, 0 0.697 ETH per block. We are pleased to release the Workbench, a new tool available in Glassnode Studio to generate custom. Okay, this is something you can go and look later. Thank you so much for listening today. This is really interesting. You know, this ETH portion at the end is just something interesting. Perhaps they're going to start adding some Ethereum insights into each week's on-chain analysis 
but for the most part, uh, things are looking good with Bitcoin. Who knows what happens with the price? Anything can happen. You know, if more coins are taken off of the market, it could make it for uh, a not so liquid market, which could make things dump. But at the same time, that just sort of shows me that there would be plenty of buyers that are ready to get them up. So with that being said, I want to thank you again for tuning in today. Be sure to turn on the post notifications so you know when the next video is going on. Check me out on library. Check out other people out on library and get set into your censorship resistant world. Here we go. Take care. I love you all. Peace.